let's check out some bad reviews, some negative reviews for Steven Spielberg's Jaws. It hurts my my brain just to yeah. say that. But this first one, 1975, September 13th, Jaws, Steven Spielberg's trashy, splashy epic about a shark who eats several people and is then hunted down and killed. Th th thanks, uh, thanks for the plot review there. <laughs> oh mean, my God. Rivetingly obvious special effects. Marginal acting by Robert Shaw. I mean, he's two for two. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, an, and an Academy performance by the shark, if you like animal acts. I mean, he's firing on all cylinders. <laughs> That's a question I have for you. When you were a kid... His favorite performance was the shark? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a story about a shark that eats a bunch of people and then they kill it. Yeah. That's... <laughs> Did I get that right? Yep. That's like, I'm trying to think of, that's like saying The Deer Hunter is a movie about a couple of guys who go to Vietnam and play Russian roulette. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, technically, yeah. But Casablanca movie, is a movie about people just trying to stay up late at a bar after it's closed. You know, like, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're just stupid. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, Citizen Kane's about a guy who runs a newspaper and remembers a sled. That's <laughs> <laughs> whoops. Writes that in the review. Whoops. Sorry to give it away. Well, no, that's what I'm also saying. They they say the shark dies at the right, end of right. the movie. He in is the admitting review. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a good point. Whole, it's the whole movie. Um, you get the feeling halfway through that the film is designed to make you a throw up, b never go swimming again, c make Steven Spielberg very very wealthy. So this is a thing that comes up a lot is that people what? talk about the gore, which uh -huh. I mean, again, I, I hate to be uh, uh, to just repeat myself, but it's going to get a lot worse in the decades to come, guys. Like this yeah. is still yeah, gore buckle up. within context. And and this is like in the in the era of the slasher movies. The eighties are coming up soon. This you think is this as is bad a, as it gets. You think this is excessive <laughs> gore outside of the plot? Like, I want to put this person and sit them and let them watch uh, Friday the 13th Part 9 or whatever the fuck. And just, oh, and just, yeah. okay, so th the, the whole, the film is designed to make you throw up. Because there's nothing else besides just wanting to make you throw up. Never go swimming again. Like, that's some, like, conspiracy that's theory. the goal. Yeah. yeah. Bi what, what, like, big land. What, what would even, what would even be the conspiracy <laughs> theory? <laughs> And make Steven Spielberg very, very wealthy. And this is, this is again, like, this is echoing the one that we saw with Jurassic Park where it's like, okay, so it's going to make a lot of money. Like, we keep hearing yeah. that in these reviews where it's like, all right, okay, I know that it's going to be popular or whatever. Yeah, it's so weird. Like, very clever, Steven Spielberg. Make a fantastic movie everyone wants to see so you get money. Like, <laughs> you have described. You figured it out. <laughs> you've described like a, a profit motive movie yeah, like it's filmmaking and capitalism That's adapt what we're a doing. great story and do it really <laughs> well with great actors good for <laughs> you okay yeah. so here is a review from 2012 so this is somebody uh who's got some pretty big britches this is from the okay. chicago reader it broke box office records in 1975 and probably posted an aesthetic landmark, too, in proving that actors and characters were completely redundant in the shopping center cinema of the 70s. Steven Spielberg's mechanical thriller is guaranteed to make you scream on schedule. John Williams' score even has the audience reactions programmed into the melodies. Particularly if your tolerance <laughs> for weak motivation and other minor inconsistencies is high. Weak motivation. The characters' yeah. motivations are weak. I mean, honestly, like, who, does does anybody really care that the children are getting eaten on the beaches? Like, <laughs> I mean, I guess it's life or death in the... We've got tourists coming! <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> So Roy Scheider, there's your motivation. That's pretty obvious motivation. I got to get the beaches closed. The the mayor, okay. I mean, sleaze ball. Uh, we got to stay open. We got to stay open. But I feel like they do a, a ph phenomenal job of selling his argument from his mindset. Like he's not a yeah, one dimensional that, character. When they're taking that ferry. They're standing on that that ferry thing. If I'm remembering 
correctly, and he's walking uh, Roy Scheider through it. And there's a point where I'm like, yeah, it's definitely like we're um, a summer town. We need summer grossly, dollars. It's grossly cynical. Yeah. But also like realistic, like the town doesn't work if people don't come here. Like you don't get like you don't understand. Like, yeah, your job is to protect people. My job is to make sure this town functions. Right. So and, and it, it's built on tourism. Not only is that a long that is a long single shot scene where probably the character with the most questionable motivation at least explains himself for a long time in mm -hmm. in a literal like one to one conversation which is so much more i mean again than you're going to get in movies after this like that that's an incredible amount of of time given to 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 explain these characters motivations i wouldn't even call him a villain or a bad guy or even an antagonist he's just someone with competing goals yeah uh in the same way that like like quint and uh richard dreyfus have competing goals themselves one wants to study the shark wants to understand what's happening the other has a actual frigging like blood vendetta against <laughs> sharks <laughs> And yeah. all of those are like it's a meeting of motivations that is like it's a it's it's a an alliance of convenience. But like on any, any other day in any other circumstance, these three guys couldn't possibly stand each other and like wouldn't be in the same room with each other. OK, so it spawned a number of imitations, including Grizzly, Day of the Animals and the Unforgettable Worms. Do not. I'm I'm so I know it's 2012. Do not blame a great movie for the shitty movies that came after it. I, yeah, that's not the it's not Spielberg's responsibility. That's not I mean, <laughs> if anything, that's a testament to how good it was that everyone's like, well, we gotta get on board with this. We gotta try and do this, yeah. Most of which failed, but the formula has lived on in the Alien series and most contemporary films with aspirations towards suspense. Yes, movies with aspirations towards yeah, suspense. That, yeah. that little oh extra dig in there. Uh, is this the same person that said John Williams, that gave a knock on John Williams music? I don't know if we've talked, we haven't talked about it yet. Uh, John Williams score even has the audience reactions programmed into the melodies. That drives me so nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's a person who scored my childhood more than John Williams. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't. He, he musically is in everything that I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Um. In like in one way or another, if not actually writing the music, having clear influence on whoever did. Um. <laughs> To say that he has the audience's programs, audience's reactions programmed in is to get it exactly backwards <laughs> because because he doesn't know how an audience is going to react. He's like, like he's written music. Oh, my God. Okay. Let me <laughs> let me start over. Let me let me. No, ah, no, I can do this. No, I can no, no. do this. You're, Dave. To you're totally right. What this is, is this a this is a guy watching the movie in 2012 going like, oh, yeah, of course, we all shriek when the, the music swells. He he knew what he was doing. Yeah, it, it's such a it's, weird knock. But what it is, is what it is, is that's a man who understood human beings mm -hmm. and and we're, we're, it was able to transform emotion into music do you have any idea like what that requires in terms of like not just not only musical ability but just like pure raw talent yeah. of like and and like creativity and vision to be like like you you've because because to program people's emotions into the music implies that like he knew how people would react. And the answer is no. Like, like he hadn't, he didn't know. He didn't have 50 years of like the benefit of 50 years of watching a movie and knowing where people are going to scream mm -hmm. and then inserted music there. He inserted music there because he knew that would make, that would help that augments that scene that creates the fear. 
that <sighs> he seems like such a nice guy, John Williams, but I really would love to have been a fly on the wall if he ever read that. John, like score even has the audience reactions programmed into the melodies. Yeah, it's the job, asshole. That's, that's exactly uh, that's what we're all exactly striving for is so that <laughs> our score matches what's happening in the emotion on the screen. And it's it's the music that causes the emotion. It's not the the emotion right. that the music is trying to replicate. Right. I think that's the point that I've been sh furiously struggling <laughs> to articulate. Um, but my God, what a what a um what a disservice to I, such a, an incredible talent to say like, oh, wow, you were able to program emotions into a movie. It's yeah. like, no, you another way of saying that is you made people feel things <laughs> by making, using point. music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you made people feel things to use to use two notes. He uses two notes next to each other. Yeah. And it's the most horrifying theme song with a little drum in the back. <clears throat> it's the most tense scene opening scene of any movie for my money i don't any know any movie I've, I've i've seen a long time um i don't know how ever. apocryphal it is but there's been like interviews where like spielberg said like you know williams came over and went to the piano and just went like doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. <laughs> and and you know spielberg was like the hell is that and and he's like trust me it's gonna work like it's i don't know how much kill. of that is is <laughs> is you know kind of hyped up over over the decades to kind of make it a bigger story because it sounds mm -hmm. like but but uh, honestly if i'm making a movie and john williams comes over and goes like all right so i'm gonna take this pan and i'm gonna go kun, 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 and then i've got this <laughs> kazoo and i'm gonna go ha -ha. Huh? You, it's gonna you, crash you trust john <laughs> williams you go thank you here's your yeah. check